Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is Renegade Operative here, and welcome to a review of Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. Now, let me give you some history as to why this game was conceived and the initial backstory behind it. Operation Raccoon City was an outsourced title created by the now defunct Slant 6 games. Slant 6 along with Ninja Theory was respectively just one of those odd and questionable choices when it came to Capcom outsourcing to other developers. They placed a lot of confidence in them, but when it really came down to their track record and their major IPs going to these developers, it turns out that their track record was as thin as a piece of beef jerky. All Slant 6 was known for was SOCOM ports on the PSP and SOCOM Confrontation, an online tactical shooter that wasn't well received amongst the gamers and the critics. So Slant 6 promised new ambitions with the branching storyline of murders of key characters in the RE universe, a newly added infection mechanic that was totally new to ORC exclusively, and a dynamic and new AI pattern that was implemented solely for this game to be the best third person Resident Evil game ever made. Right? Wrong. Let's begin with the storyline for Operation Raccoon City. The story starts off as you taking control of a bunch of ragtag Umbrella Security Special Forces, alternatively known as the Wolf Pack. There's an amalgamation of changed events as the Wolf Pack reunites with the Alpha Team leader, Hunk. As you'll start to see, the events of Resident Evil 2 is set into place. Most notably, the first mission begins with the accidental assassination of William Birkin. Eventually, Hunk and the remnants of the Alpha Team escape while Delta is left to fend for themselves as they are ordered to eliminate and retrieve any trace of evidence that would expose the company in the midst of the Raccoon City outbreak. The team is then sent throughout a journey to hell as the missions change, disagreements happen, and along the way you'll encounter some of the most memorable faces in the Resident Evil timeline like Ada Wong, Leon S. Kennedy, Claire Redfield, and many others who were active during this time period. The story itself is just a bland, uneven, convoluted mess with a shoehorned morality choice at the end of the game, which leaves so much to be desired, so much untapped potential here with this alternate timeline in regards to a branching story, and the branching story options that they claim that would make the timeline change in drastic ways seems non-existent here. I understand that this was going to be a new twist in the RE lore. This was going to be something different, and this was an alternative time period. However, the only point where your decision only matters is near the end of the game, which sets up for a largely unsatisfying conclusion to both choices. The rest of the plot is just your team heading to point A to point B, spewing out military jargon while the proposed encounters with the heroes and villains of the Resident Evil timeline is just a premise that is few and far between. The fact that Slant 6 promised us that the alternate timeline was going to change things drastically shows that they dropped the ball here. This was honestly and sincerely a missed opportunity. If you want a game that shows branching paths and if you get into the thick of that for the storyline purposes only, then you might want to pick up True Crime Streets of LA. The gameplay department of Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City probably ranks among one of the most abhorrent third person conventions ever made complete with wonky animations, context sensitive actions that don't adhere to your command, and a very cut and dry range of classes that don't make the gameplay as interesting as originally intended. This pot only stews up marinating fits of rage in the process as you control the USS through mostly uninteresting levels throughout the entire campaign. This game is just your standard affair of death dealing when it comes to certain enemy creatures, and while you can relatively get a decent arsenal, all that is thrown out of the window whenever you bump the game up to higher difficulties of challenge. Every singular opponent turns into a tried and true bullet sponge, which also applies to all the bosses and spec ops, which you'll dread fighting around each corner. You'll be sitting there with your task force arguably for hours trying to take down the most standard human opponents with a multitude of headshots or fighting a glitch super tyrant that will leave your head scratching as to how to promptly take him down. This basically means that one of the worst things implemented in a third person shooter was implemented poorly in regards to the enemies being bullet sponges. For a game that was released in 2012, the animation is surely stiff and that will show in the combat as your character has the grace of a drunken ballerina while swinging to attack things with the most horrific melee motions known to man. The shooting is relatively jittery, it's all over the place 
and the newly implemented 360 shooting mechanic where you can switch to a handgun on the fly doesn't even serve much of a purpose since you can't even tell if you're getting proper hit markers on the enemies themselves. As for the mission structure itself, well, sometimes your objectives may vary, such as being tasked to eliminate a particular enemy to progress onwards, or having to transport a viral sample to a specific location. The structure of the game tries to blend this all and add nauseam in each chapter, and recycle it into something seemingly different with the same result over and over and over again. The controls for the most part are almost a disaster and it really shouldn't feel like this in the slightest given how it's the typical SOCOM loadout with controls. It's a simple third person shooter setup. R1 and L1 to shoot and aim respectively, square to reload, X to finish off enemies after a melee flurry. It's all simple. The problem with the controls is that the sluggish movement almost hampers everything you see and do on screen. And it's surprisingly jarring when you see the controller placed in the palm of your hand when you pick up this game, it feels very sluggish and slow. Another thing that you'll find questionable is how many context sensitive buttons are mapped to each action within the game, such as picking up guns, picking up your teammates, and attacking. It's all mapped to the same button sometimes, and that is a big problem. I said a while ago that the goal of making the most pristine control scheme is to make it relatively easy to pick up and play, however when you play ORC that becomes convoluted rather quickly. You know it's an issue when reviving someone becomes a chore and your character's first action is to stomp on your downed teammate instead of helping them up. The graphics in Operation Raccoon City are largely forgettable. They range from disfigured and ugly characters, downright atrocious load times, and muddy texturing that is like the red-headed stepchild that you never want to see compared to MT Framework which blows this attempt at any form of reasonable graphics out of the water. At times, I almost feel like this was an absolutely reskinned SOCOM confrontation down to the wire. It also seems like there was minimal effort to stabilize the game itself when it came to your team loading in a new area and the game had this desire to just pause up anytime at will to load properly. With a number of glaring issues this engine presents such as clipping and wonky animations, I wouldn't be surprised if nothing in the Hexane game engine will awe inspire you when it comes to thinking of games that preceded this one. Awesome graphical masterpieces like God of War 3 and Uncharted 2 pretty much stomped this title into the ground and these games came out years prior on the same system, the PlayStation 3. So graphically, this game looking like this compared to those games, there should be no excuse. None. Zero. Nada. The sound really isn't that much better. The only thing you will remember is the fact that Allison Court stuck around as Claire Redfield when she did when it came to the voice acting. Everyone else in this game sounds like they just phoned their lines in on Skype and called it a day. All the members of the USS just sound so monotone they shout objectives without conveying the slightest hint of danger, the slightest hint of emotion. Even the genuine monster sounds can sound garbled and almost out of place to a buggy degree. I give some kudos for them remixing some tracks in the Resident Evil universe, but the soundtrack is just as uneventful to listen to after a while. It gets boring, it gets repetitive, and the newer tracks really don't sound that great for this game, especially the main menu theme. Oh my god, is it terrible. The game was about 5 hours long, but for me in terms of difficulty, it might go higher with the replay value. If you try this game out on professional, you might net about 7 hours or 8 hours, but that's not saying much. The game is still short as hell, it's repetitive as sin, and once the main campaign is done, you'll find zero reason to go back to it. There's a free Echo 6 DLC campaign that shows you the other side of the twisted journey. It shows you the other side that is the Spec Ops US fighting through an affected Raccoon City. But it's just filled with the same carbon copy garbage as the main campaign, so there's really no incentive to go back and keep going to this game. I will say reserve your money at all cost. Even for the rest of the Spec Ops DLC, if it's just as uneventful as Echo 6, then you're definitely going to get the same for your buck and it's not worth spending that much money on, on this DLC that Capcom implemented in the past for this game. Co-op is the only way you'll remotely have a good time and plenty of that time was spent bashing the game anyway to pieces with my friends, so it wasn't even that fun to their expense. 
The multiplayer is just a lively broken mess that will only serve frustration considering the fact that it takes so much punishment to get a kill on standard enemies while you can get one hit killed in the process. The game seems so unbalanced on damage with the health system. You have the standard survivors mode, you can get into the helicopter with the other team and get away. You have the heroes mode where you can play as iconic Resident Evil characters and you have head to head modes again. I'm sorry to say that even though the package seems brimming with content, it's so unbalanced that it's not going to last long to the average player. The final verdict is that Operation Raccoon City is a huge failure. I would not wish this game on my worst enemy. I'm dead serious. It's just as dull and lifeless as the enemies you mow down and any attempt to have some fundamental concept is all washed away to a thunderous riptide. Every character, enemy, mechanic. In addition to this game, it's just something that I didn't care about. With the most shoddy gameplay mechanics and the most meaningless multiplayer, I think that ORC will sit in the passions of time as one of the worst Resident Evil side projects known for the modern era. I give this game a well-deserved F. There you go. This is Renegade Operator signing off. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. And as always, take care. Look forward to the next one, which will be Evolve Stage 2. See you then.